Before proceeding further with our prayer today, I'd like to, to review the new protocols that are in place as announced by Archbishop Wester this past Friday. He states that due to the governor lifting the mandate for masks in public gatherings, masks are optional in church. However, they remain strongly recommended, especially for those over 65, like me. <laughs> so I'll be wearing a mask. Those with medical conditions that make them more vulnerable to the virus, those caring for persons in the previous two categories, and those who are unvaccinated, strongly recommend that wear a mask. However, masks are required in the confessional. If you're coming to confession, it's a closed, small, enclosed space. You must wear a mask. I don't care what your vaccinated, the vaccination status is. Eucharistic ministers must wear a mask while distributing Holy Communion. The, oblig the Sunday Mass obligation remains suspended. There is no obligation to attend Sunday Mass in church until further notice. That is the precept of the church to attend Mass on Sundays and Holy Days. The Archbishop can suspend that. However, the divine command, keep holy the Lord's day, is from God. That cannot be suspended, not by the Pope, not by the Archbishop, not even by me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if you're not able to come to Mass, Sunday is still the Lord's day. You keep it holy by your prayer, by your reflection, and refraining from work, etc. So keep, keep holy the Lord's day is divine commandment. Those whose age and or medical condition render them more vulnerable to the virus are recommended to pray at home on Sunday, preferably taking advantage of live stream masses as we are doing right now. This mass will then be, uh, what's the verb? Uploaded. Uploaded. And <laughs> you can watch it uh, tomorrow, uh, on whatever device you have, uh, usually from about 10 o'clock on. While there is a definite reduction in the number of COVID-19 cases, we are still in a moment of transition and there is much that we do not know. The faithful are strongly encouraged to observe those protocols that reduce the possibility of infection. It is prudent to err on the side of caution and to be safe rather than sorry. If you are sick, stay home. Please continue to pray for those who have contracted the COVID-19 virus and pray for a swift end to the pandemic. Now let us continue with our prayer with the entrance antiphon. O oh Lord, I trust in your merciful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, acknowledging our failures, confident of God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, 
You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade. With his spear, thrust into the ground at his head, and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of my spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, and the troops. He said, here is the king's spear. Let an attendant come over and get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today, though the Lord delivered you into my grasp, I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction crowns you with kindness and compassion. Amen. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us, as a father has compassion on his children. So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not the first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have been born, just as we have borne the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, oh, alleluia, 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 alleluia. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. (coughs) The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, to you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, What credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, What credit is that to you? 
Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them. and land expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. Praise Praise In the rite of baptism, the gospel that is usually proclaimed is taken from the end of Matthew's gospel. It's the Great Commission where Jesus tells the apostles, go make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to carry out everything I have commanded you and know that I am with you always until the end of time. When the parents and godparents are presenting the infant for the baptism, that's the easy part. But the commandment Jesus gave is, teach them everything I have commanded you. And we just heard in the gospel today all the things that, as my scripture professor used to say, I wish Jesus of Nazareth had not said these things. That's the hard part. And I emphasize that to the parents and the godparents. Teaching everything that Jesus commanded, not just the parts that you like. The gospel we heard today read very um, slowly. It was meant to be used as an examination of conscience. Because in our baptism, we took up the image of that second man or second Adam, as Paul refers to him in the second reading today. And that we're supposed to have the image of the Christ in us because of our baptism. Our collect the opening prayer said let us hasten to do and say that which is good and is pleasing in your sight well Jesus teaches us today what is good and pleasing in the sight of God then you will be children of the most high if we love our enemies, if we do good to those who hate us, if we bless those who curse us, if we pray for those who mistreat us, that shows that we have the image of Christ Jesus, 
the spiritual man, the second Adam, the one who is on high. That is what reveals us to be the children of our Heavenly Father. I would encourage you to, this week, prayerfully reflect on this gospel reading and use this in preparation for the season of Lent, which is going to be starting soon, to see how well we are fulfilling the commandment Jesus gave us, do Teach them to follow everything I have commanded you. Sometimes we have been like Abishai in the first reading today, who coming upon Saul asleep within his camp, David and Abishai, like Abishai is sort of like, here he is. He's in our he's in our grasp. Let me crush him like a cucaracha. <laughs> Nobody feels any pity for a cucaracha, except the mom of the cucaracha. But, but David, who in, in this passage is supposed to be for us like the image of God, said, no. For who can strike the Lord's anointed and go unpunished? David treats Saul, who is pursuing him, to kill. Saul intends to kill David. And here David has him in his grasp and could snuff out his life just like that. And David spares him. That's why the responsorial psalm today, the Lord is kind and merciful. David is showing us how the Lord treats us with kindness and mercy. And the psalmist continues on that he does not keep a record of our sins. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he put our transgressions from us. These scripture readings are meant to teach us how we are to live in this day with so much hatred that surrounds us, so much anger that is provoked, so much antagonism that is fostered. Our response is the response that Jesus teaches, or should be, rather than being, as we say in Spanish, se lo llevó el corriente. The, the current just carried him away. He went with the flow. Even when the flow is definitely wrong, not of the heart or the mind of God. I'll leave with the, the words that Jesus himself said. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. And the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God.
born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has blessed us with his gifts of grace. Let us confidently present our, his, our needs to his and his providence. That the church and her shepherds will be a rich source of mercy for those lost in sin. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayers. that all those who rule the world will embrace the gospel of life and the splendor of the truth. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayers. for a true peace on earth, especially where people and nations are divided by hatred, oppression, and warfare. We pray to the Lord, and the Lord hear our prayers. for the unemployed, that the Lord will give them fitting work that embraces their human dignity. We pray to the Lord, and the Lord hear our prayers. that all of us, especially in our parish community, may be more like Christ, the last Adam. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the repose of the souls of the deceased Jobin, Simone, and Demetrio Barella, Antonio, Dolores, and Anthony Lopez, may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. And Lord, hear our prayers. We conclude with the prayer for the Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And I, let's help each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I will recount all your wonders. I will rejoice in you and be glad and sing psalms to your name, O Moses. God bless you, body of Christ. God bless you, body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There's an announcement for the Synod. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Diana Clokey, one of the team members for our parish synod. A couple of weeks ago, we began our call to journey for our parish synod. We want to take a moment to thank each of you who have signed up and who have heard the call of the Holy Spirit to participate in this listening process. During the first week in March, those of you who will be participating will be receiving information to help prepare and guide you through the process. It will be sent out via email or to your home address. If you haven't received information by the second week in March, please contact the parish office so that we can make sure that we get that information to you. For those of you who have not yet signed up but would like to participate in the listening process, this is the last weekend to register. Please stop by the Synod table in the gathering space if you have any questions. We would like to give a special shout out to those of you who are between the ages of 16 to 34. You are our church's future and we need to hear your voice. So please come join us. As a reminder, you can register after mass or online at our parish website through tomorrow, February 20th. Thank you and may the Holy Spirit inspire you to be part of our parish synod. God bless you and God bless your families. Thank you, Diana. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful Sunday, everybody. Thank you, Bonte.